Yo, if you want to make money playing DFS on platforms like Prize Picks and Underdog Fantasy, then you've come to the right video. So I'm going to be sharing my five top tips for making money off of Underdog and Prize Picks. And these aren't the only DFS daily fantasy sport platforms. There are a bunch of others: Thrive Fantasy, Parlay Play, um, No House Advantage. But the main ones we're going to focus on because they're most popular are Prize Picks and Underdog. And just, you know, for a little bit of credibility, not trying to brag, is here you can see my 2022 and 2023 results from prize picks. So nobody wins every day. I don't win every day. You know, the best sports bettors, they don't win every day. So you'll see ups and downs, but about a 10% ROI over a lot of bets, right? So I'm a profitable player on prize picks. And then here you can see my results on underdog, which are even better, right? Underdog, in my opinion, is more lucrative platform. But regardless, um, as we'll go through in this video, I definitely recommend you sign up for both Prize Picks and Underdog. So, if you're curious, last thing before we move on and get into my first tip, if you're curious, you know what this is like. What platform is this? This is this bet tracker is called Picket Sports. So basically, you know, I don't work for them, so I don't have an affiliation with them. Don't bring your customer support issues to me or anything like that. But the way this platform works is you sync your sports books. So you sync your prize picks account, your underdog, and it tells you your profit and loss by sports book to hold you accountable, right? You see so many people gamble for a year and it's like, did you make or lose money? And they don't even know the answer, right? If you're betting every single day, you're not going to know your ROI after a year unless you have a bet tracker. So I highly recommend, you know, you don't have to get Picket Sports. There are others. I just think Picket is the best, but I definitely recommend you get a bet tracker. You track your bets to hold yourself accountable, okay? So anyways, let's get into my first tip without further ado. So my first tip is honestly pretty simple, right? You got to study these platforms. I see a lot of people, they sign up for prize picks and they just start aggressively gambling, but they don't even know what they should be playing, right? Should you be playing two pick entries? three picks, four picks, five picks, six picks. So long story short, I'm gonna flip over to my screen here in a second, but it's really important before you start gambling on any platform, especially these fantasy platforms, fantasy player prop platforms like Prize Picks and Underdog, that you go through and you understand them. And it sounds so basic, but it's so critical. And I'm gonna show you why it's so, so, so important if you want to make money. So when I talk about studying these platforms, this is what I mean, right? So any two picks you select on prize picks, any two pick entry, it's called a power play. You're going to see you're getting 20 to win 60. You're getting a 3x payout, right? So if I switch this to an under, hey, look, your payout doesn't change. If I switch this to a different pick, hey, look, it's still a 3x payout. So basically, the way prize picks works is any two picks you select, any two pick power play, you're getting a 3x payout. And Underdog Fantasy is exactly the same. So Underdog Fantasy, you can see they have a payout multiplier here. So any two pick entry is a 3x payout. Now, what you'll notice is things start to change if I add in a third pick. So on Underdog, any three pick entry, doesn't matter if you take overs or unders, you're getting a 6x payout. Now on prize picks, it still doesn't matter if you select an over and under, but you're going to notice you're only getting a 5x payout. So prize picks is kind of ripping you off compared to underdog fantasy if you have three picks, right? They're only giving you a 5x payout, whereas underdog fantasy is giving you a six pick. So these things really matter, right? Like 6x versus 5x in terms of your net profit, makes a huge difference long term. And once you go through the math, kind of breaking down the payouts, what you'll notice is because Underdog is offering you a better payout, three pick entries are actually optimal. Three pick and five pick entries are optimal on Underdog Fantasy. So you'll notice all of the plays that I give out, right, are three pick entries, and five pick entries on underdog fantasy. So you'll see right here, yesterday I actually cashed an insane five pick entry. So one, two, three, four, five, they all cashed, but I'm basically only playing three picks and five picks on underdog. Sometimes a four pick with insurance, because if you add in insurance, but that's a little too complicated, four pick with insurance. But for the most part, you're gonna see I have three pick and five pick entries, right? So on prize picks, it's completely different. You're going to notice when I switch over to prize picks, I'm placing five pick flexes or six pick flexes because those are mathematically optimal. So dang, you can see I actually cashed this one. So the way a flex play works, 
So flex play is kind of like a round robin, where if you go five for five, you get a 10x payout. If you go four for five, a 2x payout, whatever. We have some videos kind of breaking down how flex plays work. But the point is, in kind of what I'm going to show you right here, is I put all of these, you know, prize picks payouts into a spreadsheet. And let's just say, as an example, let's just say you can select over-unders correctly at a rate of 57%. So all the picks you select in your entry, you can win over and under 57% of the time correctly, right? So if you give a thousand picks on prize picks, so here's one, here's two, I'm saying you're hitting all your picks at a rate of 57%, right? Overs and unders that you're selecting. If you're placing two pick entries, so this is a two pick entry, a two pick power play, your ROI, right? Literally, this is just the math behind the payouts. If you're hitting, two pick power plays and you're winning, you're over unders at a rate of 57%, your ROI is negative 2.53%. You are losing money winning your picks 57% of the time. You're losing money. Whereas in a flex play, so if we switch over to a flex play, if you're winning in your five flexes, 57% of your picks, your ROI is 19.3%. Negative 2.5 to 19.3%. Just by instead of placing two pick entries and hitting your picks at a rate of 57%, placing five pick entries and hitting your picks at a rate of 57%. And again, there's nothing disputable here, right? This is literally just math and breaking down the payouts. So long story short, you know, underdog fantasy you want to be going with, and I literally put my money where my mouth is, right? All my plays, three pick or five pick entries, three picks or five picks, right? Whereas on prize picks, you're going to see I'm basically only playing five pick flexes or six pick flexes. So you'll see some six flexes maybe here in a bit. So dang, I cashed another, you know, five pick flex. But regardless, you know, you'll see some here. So here's a six pick entry where I was sadly one away from, from hitting the 25X payout in a six pick entry. But regardless, let's get on to tip number two. Tip one, again, you gotta study these platforms. You have to know what's optimal. And on prize picks, it's five or six pick flex plays, which is literally all you see in my account. And on underdog fantasy, it's three pick or five pick. So let's continue going because we got money to make. So my second tip may seem kind of stupid, but give me a second. <laughs> and it's that you should sign up for all of these DFS platforms. If you're just using prize picks, get underdog. If you're just using underdog, get prize picks. If you have both prize picks and underdog, get Thrive Fantasy and No House Advantage, Jock Market, Parlay Play, get them all. And I'm gonna give you two really good reasons why you need every platform or why you should have every platform as a sharp sports better, okay? So the first reason is they all offer signup bonuses. This is like an added benefit. When I signed up for prize picks, right, I got an $100 deposit bonus. I believe the bonus is still the same. So I deposited $100. They gave me $100. There was $200 in my account. And I was already starting out $100 ahead. It's the same thing with Underdog Fantasy. All of these DFS platforms, for the most part, offer lucrative sign-up bonuses to incentivize new sports bettors just like us to sign up, right? So take advantage of this free money. Sign up for these platforms, even if you're only going to use Underdog Fantasy a few times or if you're just not sold on it. Sign up for the platform, take the free $100, and then you can make a decision, right? Now, the second reason that you should sign up um, for all of these platforms is they don't have the same lines, right? Sometimes there's really good value on prize picks or a profitable promo on prize picks. Sometimes there's a lot of value on underdog. They're screwing up lines and you can make some good money on underdog. They're giving out profitable plays and that value isn't on prize picks, right? All these books want to be unique, so they set lines independently, Right, Prize Picks does not have the exact same lines as Underdog. They're not the exact same company, so they set lines independently. Some days the value's more on Prize Picks, some days, you know, the value's more on Underdog Fantasy, and some days the value's more on Jock Market, Parlay Play, Thrive Fantasy, or another platform. So having more platforms means you'll have more profitable betting opportunities as a sharp better. So I'll flip over to my screen for a second, just show you guys some examples. 
So here's a really simple example of where prize picks and underdog fantasy differ. So for Jehovan Quinerly tonight in Alabama versus San Diego State, what you're going to notice is prize picks has his line at 13 and a half points. Underdog fantasy is at 13. So there's a half point difference. So what this means is if Jehovan, if he ends up with exactly, if he has exactly 13 points, we're going to tie on underdog, so we're going to tie, whereas on prize picks, we're going to lose, right? So prize picks is in line with all the sports books, right? All the sports books have Quinerly's line at 13 half. Underdog is too low, right? They're kind of off the market. They're half a point lower at 13. So if he ends up with exactly 13 points, which happens more often than you think, probably let's say 5 to 10% of the time, we're going to push or we're going to tie as opposed to losing. So if you wanted to play Quinerly tonight, you should definitely be playing him on underdog because that's where the value is, right? You don't want to play this on prize picks at 13 half. If you can get 13 on underdog, as a sharp sports better, we're always looking for value. So we want to take that over 13, not over 13 half on prize picks. So we're on to tip number three, and tip number three is pretty simple. Don't bet with your gut. Do not bet with your emotions. Don't bet with your gut or emotions. I mean, seriously, 99% of sports bettors lose money, and it's because 99% of sports bettors bet with their gut and emotions. You should be looking for value in the market and betting with data. I mean, seriously, the guy making money sports betting is not the one watching highlights and slamming parlays. The people making money sports betting, the people making consistent profits on prize picks and underdog fantasy are following data. And I'll show you an example right here. So betting with data isn't super complicated, right? It's all about finding an edge, a slight advantage to get that edge over the bookmaker so you win long term, right? I never claim I win every day. I just know I have a long-term advantage and I have a long-term profit margin because I find plays with a mathematical edge, right? So you look at this play again on Quinerly, underdog has his line at 13. All the sports books and prize picks, their direct competitor, have the line at 13 half. So underdog is too low. All the sports books at 13 half, underdog's at 13. We want to take the over on underdog, right? We found an edge underdog is off from the market. We found value. And in this case, the value is on the over, right? So we're looking for discrepancies in the prices and the odds between bookmakers. We're following the data, right? I don't want to play Darian Tremel. I don't want to play his points. All the books, prize picks, underdog, they all have his line at eight and a half points. There's no value in the market. Whereas here, underdog is too low relative to the market. So we know to take the over. So another example is uh, what this tool is called is the positive EV tool on Odds Jam. And kind of what this tool does, right, is it goes to prize picks. It reads in all these lines. So baseball, basketball, rebounds, assists, points, rebounds, assists. And it just points out the value, right? So we've explained previously, prize picks, they don't vary your payouts depending on if you select the overs or the unders, right? It's always 3x payout. So what you'll notice is what this tool does is it shows you where you can get a line on prize picks and all the sports books have the under or the over heavily favored. So right here for Tage Thompson, what you're going to notice is, wow, all the sports books have his under heavily juiced, heavily favored. And we can get this line on prize picks, right? FanDuel has the under juiced to minus 140, bet online minus 141, pinnacle minus 142. Pinnacle is known to be the sharpest sports book in the world, and they have the under heavily favored, right? So getting this on prize picks is great value. Tage Thompson under three and a half shots on goal. So find value, bet with data, right? Follow the data, right? Compare the lines on prize picks to those on the sports books. Follow the data, right? As a sharp better, you have dozens of books telling you where the line should be set. So follow the data. We have one, two, three, you know, four, every single sports book here is telling us Tages under should be heavily favored. We can get this on prize picks. That's clear value. We found an edge. So let's get on to tip number four because I think you're going to like it a lot. Tip number four is don't just bet right before game time. A lot of people are like, oh, I just put in one prize pick slip right before the game start. When I get off work at six, I start looking for the game starting at 7 p.m. That is not what you want to do. 
right? Great lines don't last forever. So sometimes when prize picks first post lines for an upcoming day, there's a lot of value. So whenever you find value in the market, you should be placing wagers. And I'll give you an example. So let's go back to the positive EV tool and take a look at this play on Tage Thompson. So this game is still like 10 hours away, but you want to lock in this play now, right? Thompson under three and a half shots on goal. You shouldn't wait for the rest of the lineups to come out. It doesn't matter, right? You want to lock this play in as quickly as possible because great lines, they don't last forever. Odds Jam, the positive EV tool is saying, hey, look, prize picks is screwing up big time. All the books have this under heavily favored, and you can get this in a prize pick slip. So the second you see this, you want to be thinking, okay, do I have anything else to pair it with, right? So if there's good plays for the NFL on a Monday, I'm locking them in. If there's good NFL plays on a Wednesday, I'm locking them in. If there's good golf picks on a Monday, I'm locking them in. Great lines don't last forever. So whenever I find value in the market, I'm trying to lock in those plays as quickly as possible. So my fifth and final tip, which is really important, and it doesn't matter if you're playing DFS on prize picks, underdog, or if you're betting on sports, and it's deal with variance. Have a long-term focus, right? The best sports bettors, the sharpest sports bettors will have really bad losing days. And the worst sports bettors, the worst sports bettors of all time will have winning days, right? You need to have a long-term focused and be focused on your long-term profit margin. Anyone can win one prize pick slip, right? It's about consistently winning and making money long-term. So you'll notice if you look at these pictures here, I've had losing months and then I come back and I have a great winning month. So trust the process, right? Follow the data. Nobody's going to win every single day. And if you're not ready to lose money in a day, then you shouldn't be gambling. Nobody wins every single day. So get used to losing, have a long-term focus, and you're going to notice month after month, basically, nearly every month, if you're following data, if you're staying disciplined, you're going to make money on prize picks. So I'll put my email in the description. Again, any questions you guys have, do not, do not hesitate to reach out. Let's make some money.